Hello, everybody. Welcome to Stitching Gale. We are Stitching Gale of Waterdeep from Baldur's Gate 3 today. I already started. I took care of some of the basics. I measured out my pattern. I figured out my center point on my fabric and I got going. To be honest with you, I was playing Baldur's Gate yesterday instead of stitching ahead. But today's a stitching class anyway, so it's not so bad to be stitching. Well, not class. Hangout. I'm not... I can't help but teach. I'll explain to you what I'm doing as I'm doing it, but it's mostly just to hang out. Um, so I picked a bunch of my colors. I've got this little, it's an old cookie tin, but I had started sample stitching Gale just to see how he would go. So far, so good. His robe is, is looking great, um, but I did do a watercolor background for him. Um, I'm going to switch to my other view here. There we go. You can see that I have watercolored a background for him. Um, it's based on a scene in the game where he creates this beautiful, magical Aurora Borealis deal. Um, so I thought, why not give him a background? So for our Stitch People Club, we have a club. You can sign up. There's a monthly hangout. There's a monthly class. There's a monthly pattern. It's a lot of fun. Hi, Valentina and Marope and Glorimar, by the way. Um, so anyway, I, I did a watercolor on Ada fabric for the Stitch People Club class, and I feel like it turned out really, really well. The, the basics of it are thusly. I will tell you, I'm not a watercolor artiste. I was merely using a reference photo and trying to capture what I saw as I saw it. I, I mapped out the colors on a little post-it note, you know, where I saw green and purple and blue. And then I have cheap craft store watercolors. And I just got the fabric really, really wet with water, like you do when you do watercolor. Um, I, I, my mom has taken up watercolor painting and has taught me some, some useful things. So apparently one way to do watercolor is to get your paper wet with water first because watercolors and, um, and then you can paint over that and the water that's already soaked into the paper helps to dilute and dissolve and carry all that pigment around, which is exactly what happened on the fabric. So I'm just using a size 14 Ada fabric. It's got a gold glitter in it, which I decided to choose this one a, because it's, uh, it wasn't stark white. I'll show you some of my test paints. Here's like all my, <laughs> my painty paper towels left over, but I did some testing here. So this was just a little chunk of this fabric. As you can see, it looks pretty similar. Um, just a little test chunk to see how I would like it. This isn't just an oatmeal colored fabric. And I tested some acrylics here because I might go back and paint some detailing in that. We'll see. But then I also tested the watercolor on white. And I just liked the warmth that the off-white provided. You could see that this is more of an oatmeal base with the gold in it than it is a white base with gold. And so just testing it, I, I liked. And, and I liked the magical essence, if you will. <laughs> magical essence of the, uh, the gold coming through. And seeing as this little scene in the game is generated by magic and that Gale is a wizard, it's a whole thing. We're telling a story with our Stitch People portraits. We always do. And so I like to make choices that help tell the story. So how is everybody today? What's new? What are you up to? Are you multitasking? Gosh, I hope you are. I'm not nearly entertaining enough to be your soul endeavor right now, but, um, but we're all here hanging out. I mean, I'll be here for a few hours. For those of you who have not cross stitched before, you will see what a labor of love it is. You'll see beneath me, I have a iPad that shows Gale. So I have for color reference, but I did go ahead and pick out colors already that match in my estimation. I also have the pattern. You know what? Just to save on battery, I'm going to go ahead and pop.
pause this guy. Hello, Gayo. We'll give you a break. And we'll just reference our pattern because I got most of the colors. Oh, after we were done last week, I went and designed Tara. Tara the cat. I don't know if I'll have enough time to get to stitching Tara today. I, I really want to get at least Gail's face done and we and, and his beard and his hair. I mean, that's going to be the most interesting thing. I might stitch the shoulder portion of his robe because his hair comes down onto that. For the cross stitchers who are in the chat or anybody watching in the future, I will say I am using four threads. Of floss I know I know I'm wild and crazy I'm just a wild cat that way um, usually I use three threads <laughs> with size 14 Ada fabric but I am living on the wild side and here's why because since I painted the background of this fabric that means the background of my stitching is no longer consistent and I don't mind if I see a little oatmeal tone or white tone behind my stitches when the whole thing is an oatmeal tone or a white tone. But I decided since there's so much going on with this watercolor background that I wanted, I wanted it to be a little more consistent. So, so I'm using four threads just to fill in my stitches a little more. I'm doing a technique called railroading because I'm using a, a frame to keep my stitching consistent here. I rarely do that. I usually hold this in my hand and I can move it all around and have some flexibility. So when I stitch for classes, I try and keep things stationary and I've gotten better over the years, but I finally succumbed and got myself a stationary stand, holder, frame, whatever this is. And it's not my favorite. I find it a little constricting. What am I doing now, you ask? Well, I'm using a needle to set my floss strands, threads, fibers, what have you, aside. When you're making multiple stitches that utilize the weave of the Ada fabric, these natural holes that appear in the grid of the fabric are where you put your cross stitches. And sometimes it's, it's hard to navigate once you already have stitches utilizing the weave of the fabric. Um, so sometimes I just go through with the point of the needle first to make a little more room before I add another stitch into the mix. And I like to be as systemized as possible when I stitch, but sometimes you can't. Sometimes it, you get a prettier stitch by going out of the groove of, of your stitch pattern here. Like I said, I'm, I'm not really used to working with a frame. It's not my fave. Um, so there are some things that I need to go into and fix already. Uh, just checking my pattern here. We've done, I've left two little spots for the eyes here. Do, 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 and we're now just going to stitch up the forehead. So I'm just going to stitch a full row above and then I'll move in a square and stitch there. Um, we'll, get, we'll let the hairline work itself out. You'll see what I mean. We'll get there. Okay. So once I finish stitching the skin tone color, I'm going to go through uh, the stitches with the tip of my needle and utilize the tip of the needle almost as a brush or a comb, a single toothed comb to get the fibers to lay a little more flat. And I know around his chin looks crazy. Here's why. If you look at the pattern, you'll see that he has a beard. And I designed it so that his beard looks pretty full, but if you play the game, it's not a very short beard. I'm sorry, it's not a very long beard. It is a short beard. And so there is some skin tone 
showing through there. So while I was stitching with my skin tone color, I wanted to make sure that there would be a little bit of skin tone underneath, just in case we wanted to see that poke through. We can always cover up. It's harder to go back after the fact and like sneak threads in underneath, if that makes sense. So, you know, hopefully that makes sense looking at this pattern. And now I'm gonna use my other hand again. So yeah, I stitched in a little bit of the chin. Gonna look at the chat here. Oh, love your glasses, thank you. Hi, Christina, hi, Luna. Doing cat shopping online, we love to hear it. Cats need toys, cats need treats. Our dogs are just the most helpful little trio. They love to be um, just underfoot. So if you're in the kitchen, trying to carry, oh, I don't know, a boiling pot of water, heavy, full of pasta to the sink where you have a colander to drain it, you might trip on a dog on your way. If you're carrying a stack of dishes from the table to the sink, trying to get to the dishwasher, you might trip on a dog. So sometimes when you're preparing for an online class or stream and you're moving to and fro and you're setting up your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lights, um, and your microphones and your tests and things. You just don't want to be tripping over dogs. So we have these metal bar stools and I, we, cause we don't like to put them in their kennels. They're kennel trained. They, they go in their kennels on their own. Sometimes they like their kennels, but, uh, they're getting old and one of them has trouble going up and down the stairs. The kennels are downstairs. So we take pity on their sweet aging little bodies and we don't, we don't like to put them away. So we got out these metal bar stools from the kitchen counters, counter, and we put two of them in front of the doorway. <laughs> and the three-legged dog keeps using her little chicken wing to try and like get in. <laughs> and she's swiping at the thing and she's poking her head through. And then the, uh, the oldest dog who's in diapers and has turned into a little senile bumbling nightmare to be honest with you she's the one that licks constantly love her so much but oh my gosh the licking um she just shoved one over she just barreled right through broke through the barrier like freaking angel ross making her way in to glory uh anyway so they've been banished it's pretty cute to be honest why did i start that story about my dogs oh cats your cat shopping Bless them. Bless the animals. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. So this will start off pretty much just like last week where it looks insane to begin with. Just totally insane. I usually like to save details for the end. And when I'm stitching myself, just with my, with my, by myself, um, that doesn't bother me. But when I'm stitching a class and other people are looking, I don't love to have, uh, <laughs> I don't love to have a one-eyed or a no-eyed situation. Just a little frightening is the word I'm going to choose to use. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is do the eyes and lips next. Where did my ah spare skin tone color? So I just need to finish up the skin tone. I might even just knock out his hands too. Usually I don't do that. Usually I'll I go uh, more. I let the pattern guide me instead of the colors but he's only got a little bit more skin tone. And if I'm already thread it up, what's the harm? I ask you, what is the harm in it? Absolutely nothing, I tell you. No harm whatsoever. Oh, actually, that was premature. I'm <laughs> being a dummy dumb. Um, now that I have stitching, I can pre-secure this. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm seeing a little bit of color at the very tail end of my stitching here. What's cool about the watercolors is in my experience, 
And I don't know about what fabric you're using, if you've done watercolor background or not, uh, if what watercolors you're using. There are fabric specific watercolors. It's not that I'm too lazy to get them. It's just that I'm too lazy to get them. And um, anywho, so I just use regular watercolors. And the couple times that I've done it, it, it does not really bleed off to my thread. So I think the more times you run your thread through the painted fabric, because really, I mean, you're running, it's like, it's, you're utilizing the holes of the fabric and, and you do have to run the thread, the floss, what have you over, over top and through and around these painted fibers. So some is bound to rub off, but it seems based on what I'm seeing that it's only a little bit. So anywho, animals are the best emotional support and a lot of love. Ain't that the truth? Alrighty. Get, I've gotten quiet. I get quiet when I focus, and for that, I apologize. I'm just taking a real close look as I stitch to make sure that things are laying flat, that they're not twisting. It's kind of one of those things where if you've ever done a photo shoot or if you've ever made a film, even like a home video, some things, it's just better if you can shoot it right, than have to fix it later. Don't want to have to fix it in post. So this is me just taking a second to make sure it's right from the get go. Some of these stitches are a little tight compared to their neighbors. Just loosening, brushing with the tip of my needle. Ooh, new lo-fi beat. Can you zoom a little on the fabric? I sure can. Uno momento and I will do it. Okay, I still have to work with the beard and the mustache hair, so the stitches down here that are a little inconsistent I can fix once I'm down there doing that okay so from the ear you will see I need a pointer where's a good pointer how about this little teeny teeny tiny crochet hook so there's this portion of the beard that we have an outline for I'm just going to um over here, I did a long diagonal to fill in the skin tone color. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And then I'll go down, do his little, his little fingers, his little hands. Let's see. Could you help with this arm and so I can get this a little lower? Okay. And then we need a little more that there we go yeah perfect fabric zoomed great Let's swap out this cork real quick okay fantastic Um. There you go. Yeah. And it's a little tricky because 
the light shines through from behind. So what if I put something behind so it's a little less shiny throughy? <laughs> that is the technical term. That's what it's called. It's called shiny throughy. Okay, so little. this is why they call it counted cross stitch. I'm going to use my little hook again. So if I go from the base of the neck, these two, there's skin tone under these two squares. So I stitch them full just to be done with it. So if from the bottom left corner of this bottom left one, I go over one, two, three, and then I go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's the top of my half stitch. And then I have one more there. So I go over one, two, three, and eight. So from the bottom left of the bottom left, and yes, I'm not going to clip off my thread. I'm just going to go over one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this is my half stitch. And I am going to do a full half stitch. So before I pull this diagonal totally, totally flat, I'm going to add a quarter stitch where I stab the needle through the center of the fabric outside of the grid. There we go. So we get a little three quarter stitch. And then we will resume the same over under pattern as the rest of the work for the second stitch. Like so, like that. Now we'll count over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the bottom left corner of the next hand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is the bottom left corner of the next hand. We go in and over and up. Can I take a 20 second pause on your mic? Yes. So we need to take a 20 second pause on the mic. So it's going to go silent for just a sec. And then I'll be back. We just shifted the microphone position so that uh, so that you can hear me better. Huzzah! Thank you, Tech Man. I'm getting my needle ready with black floss, as discussed last week in the design portion of events. When you look at a photo. You often do not see the color of one's eyes because you often just see a person at a distance and see dark, see darkness where the eyes once were. <laughs> I don't know why I needed to be dramatic about that, but it's true. And so I usually stitch eyes black. Now, there is a way to represent color and I will show you how today. I'm going to use another needle. 
I knew I had one. I'm don't. Okay. Here's the thing. I have a habit of dropping needles on the floor. It's bad. So the eyes need to use this square right here in the middle of the face where I've already stitched a bunch of the skin tone. So there's all these pre-existing stitches and I'm just going to use my, my needle, use the point pointed end here to free up space for additional threads. I am using more threads than usual. I usually use three threads of floss, which means if you have four stitches coming from every direction, that's 12 threads. But if you're using four threads of floss when you stitch, that's 16. Four additional threads per tiny little point in the grid, which is already there are 14 per inch. So you've got these itty bitty, teeny tiny points that need to do a lot of work, to be honest with you. So just making sure my stitch can lay in there nice and flat so that it looks clean. See these uh, s stitches, these diagonals, don't want to let me through cleanly. Noise. These still aren't the cleanest X's in the world, but I'm not too worried because of the way that I'm going to be doing the eyes, which I will show you. So I'm just going to get them in place. You want to make sure all your diagonals go the same direction, that all the under diagonals go the same direction and all the over diagonals go the same direction. And you'll look closely and you'll be like, Lizzie, what are you talking about? Because you didn't do that. Um, I did though is the thing. There's some going the op. It looks like they're going the opposite direction, but these are half stitches. I don't have the overs yet. The overs are going to be in a different color. Remember, this is where the beard goes, and I just wanted some skin tone beneath, so that when the beard goes in, we've got some realism happening with that. Okay, cute little eyes, Dunzo Bagunzo. So now we'll tie this off. Just slide my needle through the back. And now I had to Google it. I wasn't sure what color Gail's eyes were. They're brown. Don't hate on me. I didn't know. I didn't know. So I got, they're, they're kind of a beautiful light brown actually. Um, so I got this. 3862 and I'm just going to get a little bit of length because I only need one thread. Actually, let me think this through. I'm using four threads to stitch. Usually I use three threads to stitch and one thread to outline. Now I'm using four threads to stitch. Do I need to use two threads to outline? Well, I can always double up if I want to. So I'm just going to use one thread and I am going to use an itty bitty tiny baby needle. It is an abused needle. You'll see it's curved. It didn't start curved. Nope. I've just um, used it so much and it's bent. It's bent because of how I've used it. <laughs> uh, but it's still usable and I actually don't mind that it's bent because I've learned to work with it and it sometimes is actually useful. So it's kind of strange. It is what it is. So I'm just going to pre-secure my floss so I don't have to worry about flipping my work again. We'll re-secure that. Okay, so here's what I like to do for eyes. You get the black in place. We used four threads on this Ada. Then what's nice about the thinner, skinnier needles is uh, precision. And I'm just testing the corners 
of my eye to see where it comes through the most easily and naturally. And I can brush threads into place. This is why I wasn't super concerned about the X's because I knew I was going to be outlining them. So there's sort of a, a beefy stitch, this one right here, that I want to be careful of. I don't want to do anything that's going to make that even worse. So in order to hold that in, I actually want to put my needle down here. So I'm doing a little bit of choreography so that I can either come up through this hole and down through that one, except I just came down through that one. So if I come up through that one, it'll undo the stitch I just did. So what I'm going to do is double back. I'm going to come up here and go down. And then I'm going to come back here and come up and down so that when I do, I can use the needle and tuck those threads in a little bit more and hold this looser stitch into place. Hope that makes sense. So I need to come up there. I'm going to come over here. Okay. I wish I could give credit. This is not a little eye technique that I developed. Somebody in the Stitch People community did and it caught on like wildfire. So I actually don't know from whence it came. But in an effort of uh, credit where it's due and karmic goodness, may whoever thought this up be blessed this day. And thank you for your creative contributions. Alrighty. So now we have fully outlined the eye. Once I finish this final stitcheroo. And I will outline it on the other side as well. The more you stitch, the more you get a feel for like these thinner, thinner needles. It's harder to tell if you've aimed right into the grid of the fabric or not. And you do get a sense of that, that just the more you do it. Practice makes perfect. And um, do you need? Nope. Got my focus brains going, so apologies for being a little quiet. Tell me about you. Leave your thoughts, comments, questions, concerns in the in the comments, and I'll read them and respond. Oh, I've got a three-legged dog trying to get in here again. She's going to tip your laptop if you're not careful. No, B, no. We got, she's got her head. She's like... <laughs> You know those like feeder things at farms, those like metal feeder grates that cows put their heads through to get at the hay or whatever. That's what she looks like. Nubby. Through the Nubby. She's literally got one pot in the center of the legs of the thing. I would move the laptop on top. Yeah, there you go. I was gonna say there's a laptop on the stool. There's a dog trying to get through the stool. And the stool is loud and now the dog is afraid because it's a metal stool. Silliness, I tell you. Okay, this one is really fighting me. Really, really fighting. 
And then I have to decide if I want to outline again. These are just some of the creative decisions you get to make while you're stitching. Is it brown enough? I think I am going to double up. Sometimes you got to see it to know. And it's always easier to build up than to reduce down, clip back, however you want to think of it. So once again, we have a situation here where this is a little bit of a looser stitch, just the way it went in. Again, I'm using this frame that I'm not used to using. Yeah, yeah, it's my excuse, but it's also true. Need to make sure this needle can get where it needs to go. There's a reason this needle is is bent. <laughs> because I have a habit of like, oh, cool. There's too much floss in here. There well, screw that. I'm putting it anyway. And then I force the needle through in it. And <laughs> so, you know, I need the wheel that way. I do like how it's looking to have two threads of brown around the eye, though. Laying it out nicely. Oh, I have Okay, I can talk again. Come on, see, this is getting a little overwhelmed. We've got 16, 17, 18, 19 threads going through this. You see how tiny these little holes are? 19 threads is a lot. So there's a reason it's resisting me. Let's see, I'm also curious, did I oh, I need my ruler? Looking at these hands and I'm doubting my alignment. Okay. Nope, I got it right. I'm just again it's this it's this damn frame. Making me all sorts of nervous. Okay, looking good, Gail. Looking good. Look at those brown eyes. I saw um, one of our Stitch People ambassadors, Erica Coda, posted. <laughs> she reposted. I can't remember who it was that she reposted, but she reposted somebody else's photo of how they package their, their goods. It's like somebody who sells on Etsy and does hand stitch stuff and uh, their thank you note <laughs> it's like thanks for your purchase hope you like this <laughs> and on the front of it sensor for sensitive ears it said this took an effing long time to make <laughs> that's all it says at the um, on the front and uh you know what can can relate sometimes it just 150 dollars why does it cost 300 dollars because if it didn't i'd be making like negative dollars per hour that's just how long these things take sometimes it's uh how you say a labor of love so now we're gonna tie off the brown on the back and we're gonna get one little thread of white bmc blanc DMC is a French company. It's been around since the mid to late 1700s. That's true. It's based in 
Hmm. <laughs> what is the name of the French town where it is based? I really want to go to there. I've Googled it. It's on the tip of my tongue. It is starts with an M. I'm Googling it. Where is DMC embroidery in France? Mulhouse. I don't know how to say that in actual French, but it is spelled M U L H O U S E. Come on. There we go. It's a crooked needle. Oh, I'll be making that joke a lot when you switch a stare in. A crooked touch. A crooked needle. Yes. Mole house. I have done my dogs in embroidery. I like to do embroidered animals. They are very fun. So with the white, I like to do a little sparkle. Again, sending gratitude and good karma to whoever started the Stitch People Sparkle. Wasn't me. It's a person in the Stitch People community and it's freaking cute. And this is why it's nice to build on one another. Uh, but it's a cute little detail that spread like wildfire. A lot of people do it now. And so I don't know who to officially credit. But uh, thank you. That's one of my favorite things about Stitch People is like you put the patterns out there and people use them. and uh, make them their own, and that's very fun. That's all you need. All that work for two little quarter stitches. Not even a full stitch. Two little quarters. Wee. But you've got sparkle eyes now. You see? How cute is that? All right, so, because Gail's, ooh. Okay, so Marope is our resident French expert who says Mole House is in a region of France that has been disputed between France and Germany for centuries. So the architecture is a little bit of both, which is really cool. We love to see that. We love to see that. So let's do, listen, Gail has a collar. <laughs> if you watched the stream last week. The collar was honestly the most difficult part of this. We wound up with that, which I think is representative enough. Remember with Stitch People, we we represent, we do not replicate. So you get as close as you can. That's the name of the game. I'll pull up a picture and show you the collar. It's just a matter of perspective. Do you see it comes, it comes out to the side up and over, it comes back into the hair. He's got this long neck, but because we see his chest, the neck looks even longer than it is. So I extended the neck more than I usually do for stitch people. And and we didn't get the like downward angle of the collar, but we do have like, we've got it, right? Like we, we landed on what it's getting at. And so I'm not too concerned about it. Um, because the hair dips around it, I am going to stitch that first. It is a darker purple than the robe itself because the robe, um, the robe is that, let's see, I just loosened my frame by accident. Okay. There we go. Okay. The robe is that nice, I don't know, what is that, in, in, indigo? No, it's not indigo. Indigo is way more dark and blue. Um... It's, it's purple. We'll just call it purple. But the inside of the collar is the same as this uh, red stripe here. So I planned ahead. I have all these great colors. 
I found this red. This red is the one I want. It's a bit of a darker red. It does match what's going on. Uh, sorry, I zoomed and so there we go. So when you're color matching, you have to keep in mind that your screens have a blue tint to them. They often show blue light more than actual light. So you really have to, I don't know, hold hold your screens away from you, squint a little bit to color match. Sometimes it helps to just print things out to make sure that the colors are, are well matched. Color matching, I think it's one of the most fun parts about Stitch People, and it's also one of the most maddening. It can be. It sure can be. So I'm just clipping off um, an arm's length of floss. I am going to use four threads, as I have been doing thus far. One. Two. When I stitch, I like to separate the thread. I didn't used to do this for, I mean, years. Years and years. Pretty much my whole life, I resisted doing this because it's just an extra step. But I have found that it helps my, personally, just the way I stitch, it helps my work look just enough better. Um, could you hand me that microfiber in the basket? In the basket? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Um, I'm realizing I have, like, my fingernails still have, like, watercolor. I think the watercolor dyed them, them which is super fun. You don't want to see that on camera. Do what I can. Okay, anyway, I like to separate the, the floss. It helps the threads and the fibers lay side by side instead of twist around one another. If the threads and fibers are laying side by side, then when you stitch them into your work, they'll lay more side by side. And uh, once again, it's one of those like, just one one little extra step at the beginning can help save you a heartache later. Measure twice, cut once, yada, 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 all those old adages. I do still lick the ends of my thread to get the fibers to hold together to uh, thread the needle more easily is what I'm getting at. And I'm going to get this cord, cord out of my face. Get that cord out of my face. I mean, I've still got a little cord in my face, but we'll see. Okay. So now I'm just going to be following this pattern that I have next to me. And we will stitch, we will stitch Gail's collar. He has this long neck. So we'll start there. One more audio break, my friends, BRB. You don't wanna <laughs> says says the woman who has needles that she has like mangled, but you don't wanna force things, at least not with the floss. The needles maybe, <laughs> but not with the floss. I like to stitch this is a size five needle. I like to use a size five needle. They're hefty enough, they're sturdy, nice to work with. Um they work well in size 14 Ada fabric. I don't know. I don't know if that's the official choice. It's oops. It's just what I use until I need to do more detailed work. And then I'll use a smaller needle, like a size 10. Needles go like opposite what you think where. Needle. 
Why about, I don't know why that is with needles. With the fabric, it's the number of squares or stitches you can fit per inch. So, you know, if you can fit 11 stitches per inch, those are going to be bigger stitches than 16 or 18 stitches per inch. So that one, the logic, my brain, my brain can handle. <laughs> but sometimes, I don't know. I don't know why needles are that way. You know, I really should like develop stand-up material and deliver it on these live streams and just test it. <laughs> test it to test it to my live stream cross stitch audiences. Really, you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of crossover in cross stitch and stand-up comedy. You'd be surprised by how similar these two audiences are. So let's see, what are the similarities? People who people who need to project their feelings into other mediums, whether that be laughter or repeated stabbing of fabric over and over and over to let out all the all the pent up rage, existential, you know, dread. Just low key. That's that's why we cross stitch. It's it's all low. Key. No big deal. It's just about existential dread. It's fine. We're fine. I'm following my pattern to my left. I don't know if you can see it in the camera or not. If you can't, I'm sorry. Well, I am zoomed, and zooming in on the work is. A cuter look than being zoomed out so that you can see that pattern. But the fact is, I am following a pattern. And because I did the red in the collar, and there's this red stripe down his robe. Stripe? Sash? Is it a sash? I don't know. He's a stylish dude. He didn't want just a plain purple robe. He wanted red sash. Anyway, I'm just taking care of it because... My needle's already got this floss on it. So it's sort of like, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. When flossed up with red floss, do what the red floss needs to do. It's it's the same phrase. <laughs> it's, what I'm, it's this, you know, it's the same phrase. <laughs> it's not. It's crazy. Oh, boy. All right, one, a two, a three, a four, a one, a two, a three, a four. Remember that old Tootsie, Tootsie Pop commercial? Do y'all have Tootsie Pops across the pond? For any of you across the ponders, to Tootsie Rolls, Tootsie Pops. Tootsie Pop is a lollipop with a hunk of Tootsie Roll in it. So see, this is an example where I could really, really pull this floss tight and you see how it starts to distort the fabric just because of the tension it pulls. So I want this to lay flat, but I don't want to distort. So I went ahead and pulled it. It's a little distorted, but before I secure it and move on and do anything else that would hold that into place, I'm just going to use my needle and calm, calm its tits is what I'm going to do. Okay. I think that's it for my sash Rooney. And I'm not going to worry about the fact that this isn't perfectly straight because if I look at my pattern up here where the sash ends, we have this little brown zone and we have some little buckles over top that. So that's all going to get more covered up anyway. What I cannot cover up is this little teensy tiny patch of blue showing through. So I'm going to do one more uh, straight stitch and I'm going to feed my needle into the existing threads just to blend it all together. And I will do some more detailing when the time comes because if we looked at Gail's picture and see his actual outfit, it does, it is just diagonal streaks like from bottom to top, bottom to top. And I do have light and dark that can fill in here, but 
Yeah, do I want to just do that now? I think I do because the robe cross is in front. We have this purple detail. So I, I am actually going to take care of this now. So what, what I mean by that, what's happening in my brain? The Adderall is kicking in. The coffee's kicking in. It's a whole vibe. It is a whole vibe. So what I'm going to do is straight stitch. And there's a di diagonal on the left that I'm missing, isn't there? So first we'll fill in the missing diagonal. It's going to need two stitches from me. Fill that in. And then I'm just going to add some straight stitches on top here that are parallel with the existing diagonals that feed into some of this existing stitching so that it matches what's going on with the sash. I don't want to overwhelm the space. It, I don't want it to look too thick. I've already got cross stitching under there. I probably should have thought more about this and just done straight stitches. That's okay because I'm using four threads so it spreads out pretty quick. And I'll do one more right here. And I can do some detail stitching over that when we done. Also for anybody watching, I understand it is a lovely, lovely Saturday. So please feel free to come and go as you need. I'm just happy you're here at all. It is a delight and a pleasure always to know that your presence is digitally near my presence. And, um, so please don't hesitate to come and go as you need, hopping in and out, off and on, whatever, whatever the case may be. So before I can stitch his hair or his beard or Rooney, we're going to just double check. Yep, how to hunch. So the collar's outlined in purple. So I'm going to quick outline it in purple. Because I need to. I don't think I need uh, four threads, but I learned outlining his eye that I liked the look of two threads. Now, because I'm outlining the collar, it's clothing detail, I don't necessarily want those two threads to lay side by side because with just two, it'll be really obvious that it's two threads laying side by side. <laughs> no, that sounds redundant. Hopefully that makes sense to you what I'm trying to say. What I want, what I'm getting at is I want it to have a little bit of a twist. So actually, before I start stitching, I'm just going to pre-secure this along the back, just looping it through the existing stitching a couple of times. Done so, begun so. Excellent. All right. Oh, my rope is getting materials to crochet while watching stream. We love it. We love that crafty bug. All right. So when I outline this collar, rather than having these buddies just lay side by side like this, I'm going to give it a little bit of a twist deliberately as I pull through so that it, um, so that it looks more like the outline that is meant to be. What is that called in clothes? Um, a border? I don't know. I'm just getting my needle in between the red and the purple so that they lay side by side. Great. We'll go up to the top and get this laying on top. And as I pull, going to give that a deliberate twist as I go, bam. Other side, do, 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 do. Stream of consciousness stitching with Lizzie Bean. 
Badu, badu, badu. <laughs> I just, I'll just sing, I'll just sing you a concert. I could, I could perform the entirety of the opening of Into the Woods for you. I could do the entirety of the opening of Hamilton. How about that? Just, we'll call the concert just openings. I wish more than anything. I don't think I need to do the sash outline because I still need to do the white. Yeah, we're just dealing with hair and the hair only crosses over into the collar. This was all for hair. It's all for hair. Okay, gonna tie that off. Now we get to tackle the beard. And the reason I'm gonna do the beard first is because the hair on him's little head might I don't know, interfere with the beard, might go over top the beard. I don't know. I don't know how to say what I'm trying to say. <sighs> Just picture it though. If you've got a dude, he's got skin first and he's got a beard on top of that skin. And then he might have hair that comes around just like my hair is like coming. I could have it go in front of my face. It's going to go over top any beard hair. If it, if it tousles in the wind, as hair is wont to do. So, because embroidered stitch portraits are so windy. <laughs> um, but in my brain, it makes sense to do the beard first, which sucks because I don't want to deal with the beard. We could do his tattoo. It did not print well, but he does have a tattoo. Because the beard might cover up some of that tattoo. We would have to decide what color we want that tattoo to be because it goes over the skin. It's like for all intents and purposes, it's a black tattoo, but because it's on top of skin tone, black is going to look really intense as you can see, like with the eyes contrasting. So what we would want to do is maybe something like a gray. We definitely only use one thread. In fact, I have been known to split threads split the actual threads because embroidery floss is six strands the end we love to see it but 3021 is a nice gray it's like a brown gray dark dark brownish gray so that might work yeah that might work so what we could do is this watch and loin what watch and loin everybody watch and loin all of a sudden, we're from New York. We're like a caricature from New York. No, people don't talk like that. I mean, not. I mean, they do. There's a reason there's a stereotype <laughs> that they don't talk like that. So I found, okay, found. I found one of these threads. I pulled one of these threads from the six strand floss. So I have one strand of the floss. And what you can do if you're really careful and tricksy is use a needle to separate the two fibers, see, of the thread. Here's the deal. This is where, again, I'm not lazy so much as I just work with what I've got. You can get thinner thread. If you need like thinner thread for a very, very, very fine detail, you can go get that at the store. I don't feel like going to the store. I'm stitching his tattoo now, you see. So I have to think outside the box. Now, having done this before, I will tell you to be so extremely gentle because the thinner you make this floss, the more you pull these fibers apart, the more fragile they become. That's stupid for fragile. Um, so you just have to go gradually, twist that floss apart. We love hacking the system. Heck yes. Then you'll have these really, really beautifully thin threads to work with because his, his tattoo, especially as it comes onto his face is barely, barely there. It's a little more visible on his um, neck. You see, it wants to resist because the twist is so a part of the threads. Mm -hmm. Because these thin, thin, thin fibers are uh, 
part of part of the floss is construction, honestly, is what it comes down to. Versus the six strand floss is meant to be divisible. It's meant to pull apart and give you options. So you just have to fight the twist a little bit. One with the weave, as Gail would say. One with the twist. Okay, so now I'm going to gently, gently use my fingers to um, smooth out this twist. Once again, you want to be really gentle. You don't want to overwork, as Paul Hollywood would say on the Great British Baking Show. You don't want to overwork the floss because it will get, technical term, floofy. You can already see it starting to get floofy in some points because I'm messing with the construction of it. And it it is not happy. It does not like that. It's like, hello, I was two tiny threads very tightly twisted into a single strand of floss. What the hell are you doing? And I'm saying, don't care, floss. I need you for a very specific purpose. I need you to be thinner than you are. And it's like, I see what you're going for, but can we not? No, no. Once again, you see why I have bent out of shape needles. Because I will, I will get what I need from these crafting materials also help there. Okay, so... With this in mind, I'm going to quickly flip this guy around and pre-secure my very gentle, very thin half thread. And I'm using my tiny needle. And again, the more you, the more you work it, um, the fuzzier it's going to be. So you really want to reduce. It is. It's a little bit like kneading dough. Like you can over knead it. You can overwork it. The more these little fibers pull against other fibers, the more fuzzy they will become and the less crispy it will become, which totally defeats the purpose of a th crispy, thin little eye tattoo situation. So he's got this weavy tattoo that goes up into his eye. In fact, I alluded to it in my pattern, but I'm going to pull it up on the iPad. Do you see? Do you see his tattoo? So it kind of comes from the, uh, well, I'm just going to talk about what I see. The left side of his chest comes up over to the right, boogly -doo -doo -doo, up his throat, disappears behind his hair for a little bit. And I don't know, you can barely see, this is a bit of a faraway screenshot, but it does go up into his eye. Very, very faint to the right and down. So it gets um, darker the closer it gets to his chest. So I'll probably do one thread, be very gentle. Ah, see, it already pulled apart. Told you you have to be gentle. <laughs> like the slightest bit of resistance and it can pull apart because it's so, so, so thin. And there's already so many threads happening because I'm using four strands of floss. So there's just a lot that it's resisting to, uh, to get through. Probably my own fault for using such a long length of it. Ooh, it's getting floofs. Floofs magoofs. Okay. It is so feather light. I'm going back on? Yeah. Cool. I lost my microphone for a hot sec. Love to see it. Okay. Technology, man. It's a whole vibe. Hmm. 
No. So using, again, this very gentle thread and using the smaller needle, I have more precision with where I can get it. These portraits end up becoming part, uh-oh, my floss broke again. These portraits become part embroidery, part cross stitch. So I do need to have the option of going quote unquote outside the lines. I've worked once or twice with this half, half thread. I think I'll use a full thread once I get to the neck, but the face really could not, I don't think handle full thread. It's just cotton, natural material, so it does does pull apart. And I just need it to get me one stitch. One stitch more! Another day, another destiny! Da -da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. One stitch more. Speaking of Angel Ross, there we go. Great. And the beard will help soften that. And comes off his face. Because I still have this threaded up, I'm going to see if I can get a little bit of this down the neck. Down the neck. Down the neck. We're gonna get it down the neck. Now it's a Jamaican beat. Down the neck. Do 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 down the neck. Do do be do be be be. Okay. Teeny tiny threads. Teeny McTiny threads. Nope, we didn't quite make it. The fibers pulled apart. It's all right, it's all right. Undo, undo. We've got a couple. We've got at least the face ones in place, which is what we needed. <laughs> needed his face tat. Um, are any of these salvageable? That one's too short. That one might be. We'll just keep them around for, oh yes, we've got a nice long one there. So Keep those threads around. Now for the beard. Beards, man, beards really get me, especially short beards where technically it's as light as it is because we can see skin tone coming through. I was ready to dance. Oh no, Marope was ready to dance. What was I singing? I'll sing again. I could sing. Don't make me sing. You know that SNL sketch? Except that's I'm legit that way. Like please, like please, please don't. I will for your entertainment because I'm your sole source of entertainment on this stream. Uh, but otherwise, you know, if we were just hanging out, I'd be like, no. That is a little bit. I'm color matching his beard. I pulled some colors. You can see this is a little bit like yellow. It, he's got. He's. I feel like Gail is like centuries old. Maybe is that right? So he's got some gray in his beard. So that's too light, too saturated. This could work for a beard. We've also got this one. That could work for a beard. It's a little richer. 
This is a, um, there's more gray in here, gray and green. This is redder and more saturated. That's probably a bit light. Yeah. What about this? Splits the difference on color, but it's as saturated as number eight there. Probably. Hmm, maybe we do one of each of these. Or one of each of those. We could do two threads. Three is probably going to be a little intense for his beard. Yeah, we'll do those two. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on. Those are too close. So it's either those two or those two. This is the kind of minutia we are dealing with. I like those. They're slightly more contrast. So what I'm going to do. So I'm going to pull an arm's length. Um, I'm going to pull another arm's length. I'm going to get one thread of each of these colors. We're using 3781 and 3021 for those of you wanting to replicate exactly. One of each. And then we're going to do... <laughs> We're, um, you know, what the word I would use to describe what we're about to do, is that a streamable word? Is that a word I should use on my cross-stitch streams? Um, we will call it, for Gale's sake, as he's a wizard. Well, except in D&D, there are wizards and sorcerers. I think they're two separate things. But we'll call it sorcery. We are going to do some sorcery. So we have one of each of these threads. We're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my well, do I want the little needle? We'll use an in-between size needle. How about that? And then I'll quick secure these on the back. I don't have to be quite as gentle because I haven't multi-divisible these threads. I've I'm just using two normal threads, so they're quite robust by comparison. And we're going to follow, I'm going to do this so that you can still see my stitching. And I have my pattern. I'm gonna, I don't know. We'll put him down here. There. So you can see him. You'll see what I'm referencing. And then we have the actual dude like this. Perfect. So you can see all of the pieces here that I'm working with. Gale, actual Gale, and the beard that he has, the way that I represented it on paper, and then the actual thing that I'm stitching. So, I'm going to get my stitch tin out of the way. Great. And I just unthreaded my needle. These are the hazards of the job, folks. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So the thing about beards is you want to make sure they're going the right direction. And you want to make sure the hairs are going the right direction. Beard hairs generally face down. So what do I mean by this? Allow me to draw you a really crappy picture. There's a reason I stitch and that I don't draw. So if we have Gail, he's like this. He's happy to be here. Yay, Gail. Weep. He needs pupils now. Oh, he's looking at the sky. We love to see it. So if he has a beard... The shape more or less comes down like this, comes down like this. He's got this little like chin dip situation. And then his mustache comes out like that. So the mustache hairs come this way and that away. The beard hairs go down this way. They could go a little bit straight. They might come a little bit inward if we want to help give it direction. It would look a little crazy if you kept that direction the whole way, right? So instead, we want to follow the direction of the beard or just go straight up and down. Ka-chow, ka-chow, ka-chow. You see what I mean? You see what I'm saying? So that's how we're going to stitch it, more or less, is exactly like I drew it exactly. And it'll look way better because thread is more forgiving than a pencil. Stubble beards are the worst of all. Of course, Gail has to have a stubble beard. We're going to go up to his ears because oftentimes with men, their sideburns, if, if left to their own unruly devices, 
beards and hair and sideburns will all become one thing. So the beard actually reaches up to the sideburns in theory. So we're going to give that one straight stitch down the side of the ear, like so, like this. Then we're going to follow my pattern more or less for a second. There is a half stitch up to the sideburn base. Great. And then there's a two over one down stitch like this. I might have to come back and fill in a little bit of the skin tone because there's some blue showing through right there that I'm not a super fan of, but that's, that's just a little bit. Um, the beard or the mustache, I did the mustache, I did not put any skin tone beneath it. I should have. You know what? I Since I, I now have two things with skin tone, what I should have done. So I'm going to do it before I get too much farther because it's worth it. So I happen to have some skin tone floss. I'm using DMC 945 for that. That's my favorite Caucasian skin tone. It's um, light, but not too. It's peachy, but not too. There are pinker ones. There are darker ones. There's a whole litany of DMC floss colors you can use for a whole litany of skin tone colors. Um, this is just my, my go-to generally for Caucasian skin tones. 437 is my go-to for medium skin tones. But again, there's, there's dozens. Um, got a whole color guide in do-it-yourself stitch people. And we're coming, I'm developing a color card Literally, as we speak, because color picking can be difficult. So I'm going to quickly fill in the cross stitches under the mustache. And I'm going to fill in this blue. It needs a little halfy stitch is what it needs. Go under that mustache. Under the mustache stitch. We shall fill in. This is all right by me. Great. Nice. No more blue, which is good. I fill in one more little quarter stitch over here where there's some blue. We don't want blue. Again, if I hadn't watercolored the background, there would just be like a light oatmeal fabric color coming through. That would actually blend away with the skin tone color. Wouldn't be a super big deal. Not even a little bit, but because it's blue, it don't look right. Not at all. So I'm taking the lessons I've learned from the right side of his face, his left, my right, and I'm applying them to the left side of the face where we want just like a little quarter stitch to cover up the blue and then we'll be good to go. Yep, blend away, blend away, blend away, blend away. You know, Enya really has it made in the shade. She gets out all these bangers in the 90s, makes a crap load of money, buys a castle, and disappears. That's, that's the way to do it. You know what I mean? Okay. There we go. So just fleshing out the flesh tone if you will. And we'll tie that off. Great. 
Wink. Put that needle down and we'll pick this needle back up. Great, back to the mustache. Back to mustache land. Here we go. So we have mustache stitches, but I want the mustache to be the correct direction. So I'm going to do a couple more of these longer diagonal stitches in the direction of the mustache so that the eye associates it with, with a mustache and like fills in the details accordingly in your brain. So when you're working with such a small space, again, we're not replicating, we're representing. And so you take some creative liberties, but, but your brain does a lot of the work for you. You'll be surprised. It's like, oh, I see, I'm, I see a face in that. I see a mustache in that. Perfect. This is great. I know what to do with mustache. And it, uh, it'll fill it in your, in your mind. So again, just like I drew kind of poorly for you, I'm creating mustache stitches of a similar, similar direction. Short little straight stitches to represent the look of a mustache. And if you were to be stitching, I know some of you are working on some other projects, other characters, and if you were to be stitching a mustache for anyone, this is the kind of method you could follow for any and all wizards, men, mustached folk. And now I'm going to basically do the same thing on the other side. And in fact, I'm going to Pop over to his sideburn. I'm gonna fill that in like this. We need our half stitch this way to give him that line down his face. Yep. And then there's a two over one up stitch right here. Still crazy to me how many things you do stitching. Yes, it is crazy. It is a little bit crazy in such a small, tiny space. As long as you have the patience for it. <laughs> it's like that meme you see going around of uh, men in black. Is it worth it? Yeah, you're strong enough. <laughs> With stitching, it's... Um, if you're patient enough. And because this is a mustache and these are tiny little stubbly mustache hairs, I'm not worrying too much about if these are laying flat or if they're twisting a little bit. I, I actually am, I want the variety. So I'm just going. I don't mind some of the skin tone showing through because that's more natural. That's my personal preference though. If you like your stitches to be so stinking consistent, you can choose that. And his mustache is wider than on his actual face because stitch people heads are freaking wide. So that's why that is. Um, you know, sue me, I guess. stylistic stitch people choice that was made 10 years ago and just been keeping on with it ever since. So I'm just referencing my pattern, pulling, I'm pulling in the skin tone a little bit, manipulating this stitch because of how I designed this. I, I don't want the skin tone to go out of bounds of the chin where we designed the chin. Because if you recall, 
his skin and his hair is like the same color. And so we did this line. You can kind of see it, this line that comes down and around to differentiate what's going on between the two. And so I don't want the skin tone to go outside the bounds of that line that we predetermined. Now I'm below, I'm at his chin. So I'm going to do one straight stitch up and I'm going to, I'm going to go above the lines of the fabric because of this. Um, there we go. The situation with his, his, his beard really goes weep like right up into the middle of his bottom lip is the word I'm looking for. So I'm going to bring this up a little bit farther than the holes of the Ada fabric because I want this to do that ever so slightly. I'm not going to overdo it, but we can, again, we're not replicating. We are representing. So if that's what his beard does, we might as well make a little bit of an effort to, to represent that fact. And now I'm going to do some straight stitches along his chin. We'll see a little bit of skin tone come through, just a little bit, which is good. We want that. I'm going to go back and forth around the center of the chin area because I mean, this looks insane right now. I know it does. <laughs> Just uh, this is one of those trust the process things. I'm hopping around a little bit to the right and left side of the center point of his chin. The reason being, if you want to make stitches too close together, sometimes uh, sometimes it causes problems. It might pull threads out of place because you're just it's like too much um, too much anchored. It's like the reason uh, if you have like a table, you could have legs. I, I need to go the other direction, but you could have legs like this, whoop, straight down. But if you put them at an angle with like a brace, like that's stronger, you know what I mean? So it's like, if you have too many little stitches side by side by side, all these threads that they're anchored against are going to like warp out of place versus if you do like a stitch here and a stitch here, and you have this much space in between them, there's some tension there to hold things into place. Oh, there's some chat happening. Let's see. I need to remake potions master. It is beer so wrong. I need to do, I was thinking I'll do um, Hogwarts legacy characters next. Cause I stitched up that gifty one for my friend posted it to the gram. So I have the patterns and I have shared them for personal use. So I might as well post them for free. I could do classes, free freebie classes after that. I'm going to add one more stitch that'll bring like the hairs up to the center of his bottom lip. Little details like this. It's literally like a half of a 14th of an inch but it'll, it'll make all the difference. Um, let's see. Now we have a half stitch from this point in the pattern to this point in the pattern. We need to make room for where his little smile is going to go. He's a happy fellow after all. Gale of water deep. Always looking on the bright side of life. Have a half stitch over here. Great. And now, oh, I am going to pull in the side of his beard. 
this away. We're going halfway between the holes of the fabric. Some people might like do the whole outline first and then fill it in from there. I'm just, I'm just letting it take me. I do often like to outline just to give myself boundaries. Creativity loves constraint after all. So there's my outline. And then I can fill this in accordingly. And here's the thing. I see in your comment, you're like, I did it so wrong. I don't know that you did. Because as you can see, I'm doing some outline and then some filler stitches and then some more outline and some filler stitches. Some people like to do just filler stitches. Some people like to do the full outline and then fill it in. Some people like to do long stitches and, you know, like there's, there's different ways of doing it. Right now, I'm just doing short little straight stitches within the skin tone color because uh, beards are the worst beards are harder than hair beards are in my opinion the hardest thing to replicate whether you're doing embroidery techniques like i'm doing or even if you're just cross stitching it because you still want to get the, the coloring right and the the flavor right it, it can go from a short cropped stubbly beard to like a big long beard in a in a couple of errant stitches. So beards are hard. So that's to say there, I wouldn't say there's like a right or a wrong way to do it. There's just like the current way that you're trying. It's one thing if you don't like the way it looks, you know, but it, it it's not, um, it's not a matter of like right or wrong technique because every beard is different too, especially um, the Hogwarts pattern that I shared with you. Um, his facial hair is wild. It's really patchy. It's really, really patchy. So like you can't, it, he will look wrong to do a full beard. Gail, if his goes a little bit the way of a full beard, it's, I mean, it's, look at that. It's full coverage. So, you know, it could be worse for him. But with the Professor Sharp beard, it's uh, it's really it's it's very patchy. So so don't beat yourself up too much. Okay, so I do feel that, uh, yeah, his, what am I trying to say? Skin tone, his skin tone is showing through nicely. And this guy needs to go up one and then over two and a half, one, two and a half. And once again, we'll just fill this in. Now he Mm -hmm. Well, it won't be perfectly symmetrical, and that's okay. Because for some reason, I didn't fill in quite as much skin tone on this side, even though I, like, double-backed and added more. Just wasn't paying attention, I guess. So, we'll fill that in. Just make sure we leave other skin tone visible. And by doing a bunch of short, little straight stitches, you do give the, um, what am I trying to say? You do give the impression of shorter hairs as opposed to um, 
longer stitches from like if we go from the sideburn down to the chin it's going to look like longer hairs and it's going to again your brain fills in a lot of the information more than you think um my hubs has a pretty long beard right now like he's got this fun longer wintertime beard and so the hairs on his face are literally longer and he brushes it down and so you get these longer hairs that draw from sideburn down um as opposed to a stubbly beard is all just these tiny short little hairs and so that's just something to keep in mind when you're replicating a beard that okay yes even if this one is a full coverage beard it is a short beard so we'll achieve that full coverage with shorter stitches so that our brain can fill in the missing pieces of the puzzle hi amber thank you for hanging out and watching when designing characters you find it easy to design from the head or the feet that is a great question and you can go back and watch if you if you're curious if you saw last week's we designed gail um so that full video is up i made a time lapse of it i'm gonna post it to uh reels and TikTok and all the things um it looks really cool but um it's tough to say. It depends on the character and ultimately, personally, just the groove I've developed over the years, I tend to design feet first. Because feet, feet, <laughs> pun intended, I guess, feet help to ground the character. But I know that feet, I, I always tend to do three squares wide. So I'll do three squares, skip to three squares. And then I've got the, the legs are two squares wide. I can go and then I add the torso and then I add the, the head. So I tend to do feet first. I often tend to stitch from the feet up. Um, or, or from the base of the legs up. I might not start with the literal shoes, but Okay, so we've got some skin tone showing through for Gail on the left side. We've got a little more showing through on the right side. So I'm going to just cover a little bit of the skin tone on the right, just a little. I think like two stitches will do. just to even out the look ever so slightly. Once we get the hair in place, it'll be easier to outline this as well. Yeah, feeling good about that. And then, yeah, 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 okay. So I'm gonna use an, a spare needle and brush some of these stitch fibers into place. to make sure that when all is said and done, I have, I don't know, all of the shapes, all of the elements that I need. That's nice. We like this angle. Yeah. His beard comes down. He's got this tattoo. Tattoo is almost the same color as the beard, which I don't love, but there we are with it. Okay, cool. Now we can talk about hair. Should we give him his little smile? Might as well. I like to use DMC 3712 for lips if I'm using DMC 945 for skin tone. As I said before, DMC 945 is my favorite color skin tone, although there are literal dozens of skin tones that you can use. Uh, I need my flouse box. Dozens of skin tones you can use. There's a little floss of DMC 3712. That'll honestly be plenty. I have, I keep like, spares or it's like too long to throw away 
and I might need them later. And then eventually when it gets really big like this, I just throw it away. <laughs> some people stuff them into one year. I did this. It's, it's a great idea. Some cross stitchers like will save those scraps and stuff them in a Christmas ornament, like those clear globe Christmas ornaments as like little remnants of all the projects that I worked on this year, which is super duper cute. And did that one year. That was kind of fun. But yeah, uh, DMC 3712, great for, great for lips. So we're just going to secure our floss on the back of the fabric so that it doesn't go anywhere. And when we start stitching, we don't have to worry about that tail. We'll flip this over so y'all can see what I'm up to. And I have a low battery alert. That's no good. I think this is my... I um, got my tech guy on it. Tech guy's on it. Meanwhile, I'm going to stitch Gail a smile. So according to my pattern, I've got a long straight stitch, just history of, I've stitched like 500 of these portraits in my life. Not even kidding. So I'm going to use, uh, my needle will go halfway between the holes of the fabric. We're going to go a length of two squares instead of one little stitch and two little stitches. I'm going to straight across. Then we'll do a little quarter stitch up. So he has a tiny, tiny little gale smile. He a happy guy. He a happy, a happy guy. He a ha ha happy guy. I'm using three threads of floss because I've been cross stitching with four. Usually I use two threads of floss when I cross stitch with three. We'll pull that nice and tight. And then we'll do a quarter stitch up towards the mustache. And then we'll get a happy, a happy gale. Uh, my Nordically bound friends will appreciate, uh, my, my husband speaks Swedish. And so <laughs> the one reality show that I watch, I don't know why I started the first season and now I'm hooked is Love is Blind. And, um, <laughs> There's a Love is Blind Sweden, which I've been curious to watch. I haven't watched Love is Blind Japan yet. That one would be very fascinating. There is Love is Blind Brazil, which I have watched. And it's interesting to see the cultural differences because like the whole idea for those who have not seen it is you have like 16 men, 16 women. Um, these are heterosexual people looking for a member of the opposite sex. Uh, to marry. Ultimately, they are ready for marriage and they've just not had success in the real world and the real dating world. So they go into this experiment and they give up their phones for 10 days and they they have these comfortable, they call them pods um, with like a sofa and like snacks and stuff. And you talk to the other contestants, I guess, participants. Um you can't see them, but you talk with them, get to know them. And then if you want to meet them in person, the only way you can meet them in person is by proposing. And so you fall in love without ever seeing them. And then there's this big reveal. And what's really interesting is on the Brazil one, instant makeout. When they reveal, like they open these doors and they like run to each other. And it's like, like hands are squeezing and like it's like making up the americans are always like oh my oh my gosh this is so crazy and they like awkwardly like and then they'll hug each other and like oh my gosh are you can i kiss you <laughs> like <laughs> like puritan drama um thanks america and but the swedish one the swedish one is nice they're a little bit more of the american ilk they're not the brazilian like squeezy lovey immediately um so there's like a politeness about the swedish ones um but it's a little bit more confident than the meats i would say it's like they're a little bit more self-aware anyway the reason i started talking about this there was a reason oh yeah because i was doing this uh, i was doing this silly voice for gail and ever the the stockholm accent i guess like when the um, when the Swedes speak, the female Stockholm accent, just like, like in LA, there's like this girl accent. Like you could be like a total LA girl, right. And you're still speaking English. I guess the Stockholm accent, like it's very much in your throat, but like the, the talking. To... So now that we've watched Love is Blind Sweden, I've been talking to my husband that way. 
like I ha good morning good morning dear can I have some orange juice <laughs> they, you know I don't know what are some Swedish friends y'all 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 day I love you and I was like y'all day like it's just like in the throat um <laughs> and it makes me laugh so hard I don't know why it's just such a strange linguistically it's um like it's one thing for like a dialect like where you're speaking is the same whether you're in the south or whether you're you know in Minnesota or something like my placement of my voice the mechanics of my voice aren't changing it's just the way my mouth is moving so I think it's a fascinating thing I guess in LA sometimes you have like that vocal fry where it sits low in your voice like freaking podcasters are doing but for the most part you can have an accent over where you normally speak so I think it's really interesting that like a, a, a localized accent shifts your literal shifts your literal placement like to the back of your throat I think it's fascinating anyway all of that to say it's because I made a silly voice when I started talking like I want to talk about a Gail as a happy guy. Okay, Um. now for Gail's hair. Oh, we've got questions. Do you remember what the first characters you made? Yes, my family. My very first stitch people I made for my mom. So it's my mom and dad and me and Spencer, my hubs, and we had Lucy and Pepper at the time. We didn't have Nubby yet. And then my sister and her first husband, and they had two cats at the time. And my parents had a dog. So I did... Three men, three women, two cats, and three dogs in the, yeah. And the naked, the, no, Love is Blind is not the naked people. There's this British show called Naked Attraction. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, it's actually the literal opposite of Love is Blind. Love is Blind, the whole thing is you're supposed to fall in love just by talking to somebody and never, ever seeing them. Um, and the whole thing is like, can your love for this person who they are at their core and their personality um, can that survive, you know, the real world and seeing each other and all this. Naked attraction is the literal opposite. You don't hear their voice. You don't know anything about them. There's just like these contestants like lined up against a wall and there's these screens. And <laughs> this, is a British, this is a British reality show. And the screens, um, the screens will like lift. They're like little garage doors. They lift and there's there's naked people behind them. And um, and so the screens lift and you see like up to their thigh. <laughs> and then the contestant has to eliminate someone based on like their legs. <laughs> and then the screens lift some more to like their chests and they're they're just standing there and so you see it all and then they have to eliminate it's like the literal opposite of love is blind and then i think they speak i think they speak when they're still covered from shoulder and their face is, is covered and then they have to eliminate someone based on just like the sound of their voice it'll be like hey how are you doing i'd like to take you out or whatever like they say something and then they reveal the face i think the face only gets revealed of the person you choose but when you eliminate them, the group, and this like naked person will come out to the contestant and be like, sorry, it didn't work out. <laughs> it's so weird. Oh, when my sister was living in the UK, she was like, so do you want to see a show that's on over here? And I was like, what? Oh my goodness. What a show it is. It's so bizarre. And it's all treated very like matter of fact. Just... No big deal. Okay, so this is the color I chose, 3862. There's some highlights in his hair. When the sun hits, this um, auburny tone lights up, which we like to see. We've also got some gray. So I've got this 3781. I think that's one of the ones I used in the beard. That could work too. It's a bit of a gray or brown. Uh, yeah, I do like that one. So if we bring that into play, yeah, except that doesn't match the others. Boo. 3781. Oh, these are just two of the same. Great. We're going to toss that. Uh, we don't need it. We don't need it, I say. But I do have 3862. That could also be the highlight color. No, I like this one. There's more orange in it. Hmm. 
here's some more browns. 37.90 is a bit of a lighter. So this is probably our grayest tone. I like that. And then we also have more 37.81. Don't need it. This might be our trio right here. I could also do... I really like this color, but what worries me is every time I pull it out and look at it against his photo, there are purple undertones in this that I'm worried once I stitch the robe, it, uh, it's going to draw. I'm going to get rid of this color because I keep getting tempted to use it, but I think once it's next to purple, it's going to be bad news bears. 839. That's the choice. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a combo of 3781, 839 and 3790 except 3790 is a little bit lighter than my highlight but the gray is more mixed in throughout his hair and then the highlights the pretty rich toned highlights okay so i'm going to use three threads 3781 839 3790 we're going to stitch his hair with that then we're going to go over top with one thread of 3862 and uh create some highlights hold some things into place with that Gosh, who would ever want to be on that naked attraction show? That's the other thing. It's like, wow, you've got to have a, there's like a whole level of confidence. Maybe people apply for that to like challenge themselves. And then the whole idea is like, does it get weird <laughs> to go on a date with this person now that you're both, both fully clothed instead of just one of you? <laughs> Jeez, it's so weird. The, what is reality TV done to our society? We will... I don't know. We will never know because we will never know a uh, society without reality TV. Thank you, Survivor. Thanks for doing this to us. Survivor, I think, was the first reality TV show. Okay, so I'm going to cut these three. Hello? Jag älskar dig. That's Swedish for I love you, I think. And is it Sverige? Sverige. Hey, ja, Sverige. Or as these Stockholms would say, like, Halla, Sverige. <laughs> it kills me. I'm exaggerating. I shouldn't make fun. I'm not making fun. It's like, I have this compulsion when I hear things that are interesting to me to repeat them. Like I have to, I have to figure it out, especially if it's spoken. I have to figure it out my voice. I have to figure it out my, I, the mechanics of it. It's like, how do they make that sound? What are they doing? Um, so I do think the Stockholm accent is a little cuckoo. I, I think that's odd because then when like, when Swedish like pop stars or musicians sing, like, they don't sing like that. They just sing normal in their resonant, forward-speaking, normal voice that, like, fills their sinuses and utilizes all their face space. But not when, not when they speak, especially not on Love is Blind. Kind of people that get on that show. Jamie. Uh... Sounds like Scottish. What? What? Vocal fry freaks me out. When English isn't your first language, it's awful to understand. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah, vocal fry. Vocal fry. Like, it just makes everything really... It's And it's really... But, well, it's not really bad for you. Vocal fry, what happens is it's your vocal cords slapping together. Um, rubbing together actually there it's like it makes your vocal cords do that so usually usually when you sing like ah your voice is just going like that the air is making your vocal cords when you're doing vocal fry it's like your vocal cords are just going like that and it's it's good for a second sometimes if your voice is tired like if you wake up and you have morning voice or it's late maybe you've taught a class and have been streaming for four hours or what have you um, if you just do a vocal fry, like, uh, 
like just for a minute, it gets your vocal cords together and can help relax them. But if that's where you speak all the time, it's really aggravating actually for your vocal cords. Um, but for some reason it's become this, like this popular thing, not to, not to care, but most people, especially men, because men like to have manly voices. So they, so they talk low and they let themselves get fry. Um, but a lot of men, a lot of men would benefit from actually speaking up here and women too. Like a lot more women are sopranos and that's like a really healthy place to let your voice speak a little higher. It's way less fatiguing. Uh, yep. Lots of, lots of, I had vocal nodes and laryngitis and all sorts of things. Um, okay. So let's talk about real hair briefly. We're going to do what uh, the Stitch People community has lovingly called the real hair techniques. Uh, Giselle, Alice and the Bear, check her out on Instagram. She's a goddess. She's the best at this. Um, she has developed some really great techniques that she is sharing with us. We're developing a book about it, which is really, really awesome. If you look at, first of all, a cross stitch portrait is a cross stitch portrait. If this embroidery freaks you out, don't do it. You don't have to do it. You can cross stitch the hair. I try and make my patterns as cross stitchable as possible. So we just have some little half stitches and things that you can work on with straight stitches, but otherwise you could cross stitch this, call it a day. If you wanted the hair to look a little bit more natural, you'll see where's my crochet hook pointer. You'll see his hair comes up his forehead and goes back. And then it goes, there's like these vertical, I'm sorry, horizontal hair lines. We've got some wispies that come out in front. It goes over and around his ear and then curves out. Like there's just a lot of motion that you can capture with the hair. And just like we drew his beard, which is a little cuckoo looking, we could essentially do the same thing to, to do his hair. I put his part, his part's more or less in the middle. It, it's a little bit to the side, if if I'm being honest. But um, his hairline, this just comes straight up and over. Uh, this all goes out to the side like this until this starts curving around the ear. We've just got some natural lines that we'll play with swirling around down here. And then same thing, this comes out and over the ear. This just goes straight, 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 straight back, straight back, straight back until we've got these swoopies. So I know it sounds, it's easier said than done to just be like, oh, just stitch straight stitches in the direction of the hair. <laughs> Easy. Um, one thing you can do to help you and to give it a little bit of lift is to cross stitch first or even do half stitches. But I like to recommend doing half stitches in the direction of the hair. So if this is our face and he's got these cute eyes and this smile. Yay. Yay, Gail. We have a beard too. Good for you. Um, what we can do before we just start stitching willy nilly these straight stitches and curved stitches, couch stitches, we're going to do a bunch of different embroidery techniques. What you can do is do half stitches, but I would recommend doing half cross stitches in the direction that the hair is going to be going first if that makes sense. Um, so we'll do half stitches like this, then we'll do half stitches down, just to give the hair a little bit of uh, base, um, so that as we do straight stitches over top, the color that's coming through is not the color of the Ada fabric, or in this case, kind of even worse and weirder. Oopsie doopsie, I forgot I had threaded that one. Um, the watercolor background, we don't want that coming through. Don't want it is what I'm saying. Oh, which is funny. I didn't even see your comment where you're talking about Adele. And then I use that weird Adele voice. It's a bit cockney, isn't it? Um, her, she sings so unhealthfully. It's why she cancels her tour sometimes because her vocal cords are shut. Smoking also kills your vocal cords. Okay. So I'm going to save battery on my iPad and I'm going to start. Oh gosh. Let's get rid of this tin. Bam. I want him in the background for y'all to see. Fantastic. And I'm just going to do these filler stitches, half stitch diagonals. Yeah. I've kind of geeked out about voice stuff and I get, 
I don't know. I'm passionate about it because our voices are so important. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a singer. I've had a lot of training. My mom is a singer and I got laryngitis really bad in 2017. And I used to be a really, really high soprano, really, really high soprano. And now I'm more of a mezzo and that's okay. I don't know that I'll ever get that range back, which honestly kind of sucks. It's still there. I just have air. My, my vocal cords don't shut all the way anymore. Like they're supposed to. So a lot of air comes through. And I, uh, because of the nodes that I developed with laryngitis, I re I like, I, I relearned after I started healing, I relearned how to speak in, uh, wrong. I guess my body compensated. Poorly. And so then I had to go to the doctor and get cameras shoved down my larynx. To see what was going on. And uh, I had some notes and I had to relearn how to do it. And it's all about getting your vocal cords to close. And you see the vocal fry goes away when you let yourself speak in a slightly higher register. It just takes like a little bit of thought and a little bit of choice to say, I'm not going to speak in the fatigued way. I'm going to speak in the healthy way. But if you watch Stitch People videos from like 2014, 2015, and I'm like, hi, I'm Lizzie Bean. I'm going to teach you how to do French knots. It's like, who is this person speaking like a little Disney princess? Now I turned into a Disney villain. Ha! But yeah, it's the, the quality of the voice is a little bit different. I like to get um, lines, outlines in place before I do real hair techniques. Again, it's just sort of a way to, hmm, what's the word I'm looking for? It's so it's like coloring pages. That's a theme that's on, been on the mind today. My day started with the coloring page, not a real coloring page. Just a, just a little sketch made me think of coloring pages. Oh, boo, I've got a knot on the back of my thing. Whatever. I didn't catch it in time. It is too late now. Too late, baby. Yeah, it's too late. Da, 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 da. That's a great song. I wish I knew all the lyrics. Something inside me has died. I got, uh, Carol, is that Carol King? I think that's Carol King. There's a musical called Beautiful, all about Carol King. She wrote so many hits. What a boss, babe, as the youths would say. Um, because we're just doing filler stitches, these don't have to be super de duper de precise. down around the ear. We do have some stitches that will go around that, but I'm going to I'm going to leave that for now. We're just getting our just getting our base in. Base stitches. Okay, I think that's pretty good because now we're getting in collar territory and things are getting overwhelming and then we'll get through. We're going to double back. We'll do more details. That'll all work out just the way it should. So we'll skip a Rooney to the other side. We don't have hair. Yes, we do. No, we don't. I'm above the collar. Aha. Okay. Okay, half of these stitches, half of these half. We'll get the other stitches soon. We go under the ear. We have straight down the side of the ear. 
And then from there we go up, we get our outline in place. I think that's one, two, three. Great. This guy. And now we've got like a gale coming together, don't we? It's very satisfying. That's one thing about uh, putting in the half stitches as a base is it's it's uh, helps helps you visualize what's happening a little better and it can give you some confidence around the real hair techniques. Oh, I can still sing without pain. Yes, Marope. I've, uh, it, it, it was hard for a minute there and it messed with my pitch. That was the most frustrating thing was because my voice mechanics changed. I'd hear a pitch. I don't know. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And I'd hear it and I'd go to sing it and I'd like, the mechanics were wrong. And so, it, uh, yeah, my, my pitch it was weird. It was really, really weird and frustrating. It was like, I'm doing what I always did to match this pitch, but it's not coming out <laughs> as, the, as what I expect. Um, but over the years, I've, I've gotten used to the new kind of, I don't know, the new, the new voice that I have. Um, and my, like, if I sing high, like, like if you can hear, uh, there's like air in there. I don't know if you can hear that. Ah, there's ah, underneath it instead of like a pure tone. Which is odd. So it's just, it's just weird. It doesn't sound like it used to. And it's okay. It doesn't sound bad. And that's what I've had to and go to therapy about. Is that like my... It just doesn't, it's just not what it used to be. And that's okay. It's not a bad sound. It's just a different sound. Okay, Gail. Now we get to do your detail her. So now that those half stitches are in place, I'm going to bring his hairline down. There was, um, I remember I used to, I love, I don't know if any of you are familiar with Audra McDonald. She's a Broadway singer. She's absolutely lovely. If you saw the uh, live action Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson. What's his face? Matthew, whoever the heck. Um, she played the wardrobe, the opera singer wardrobe. She's wonderful. And uh, I've seen her on Broadway and things and beautiful, beautiful Juilliard trained soprano. And she was always sort of my mm, inspiration. She did this beautiful show called 110 in the Shade. And uh, there's a character named Lizzie in it. And I felt very happy when uh, in college, I there was a song from that called Simple Little Things. And I performed it for one of my juries. Um, and it's a beautiful song. It's like um, the beginning goes, simple little things, all I want are simple little things. The whole song is about like, all I need is uh, someone to, well, I don't know. It's just like she she goes through and talks about all she wants is to like be loved and have a family. And she just wants simple things. Um, and that used to be like a go-to song for me, like auditions and stuff. That one and Feed the Birds from Mary Poppins. Uh, and when I could nail those ones again, I felt happy. I haven't sung in a while. My voice is tired, so I don't sound great today. But, but yeah, it was like once once there were some milestones in place that helped. Feed the birds, tap in the bag. I love her accent in that song. That was always good for British shows, like when I auditioned for Jane Eyre or Christmas Carol, or any of those British shows. Peter Pan, when I played Mrs. Darling in Tiger Lily. Tuppence, tuppence, tuppence a bag, feed the birds. Tuppence a bag, tuppence, tuppence a bag. <sighs> I 
Mr. Bluebird on my shoulder. Mashup, bam, Disney. That was uh, Walt Disney's favorite song. Let's feed the birds. Of all the Disney songs. Mm -hmm, ho, 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 show them you care. And you'll be glad if you do. Young ones are hungry, their nests are so bare. Mm, come and do something to do. It's mm, a nice one. Feed the birds. I am terrible with lyrics. I remember them when they matter, <laughs> like for an audition. Anyway, oh, for the love, for the frickin' love of Pete. There we go. Having a hard time, just uh, having a hard time uh, threading the needle, <laughs> as they say. There we go. Oh, you're sweet. I'm glad you can't hear it. I can feel the difference in how, you know what I mean? I can feel the difference the most, and I can hear the difference with the air, the airflow. It's the, and there's different vowels that do it because like your vocal cords do different things on different vowels. So like a ha ah, is a different buzz than a e that buzzes more in my nose. So I love an e vowel because e's buzz the way that I'm used to. <laughs> e I can go very high still on an e. Oz it cuts out. And you can hear my voice is getting tired more quickly. But that's also just I'm out of practice. It's almost, I Julie Andrews has been a bit of an inspiration to me because she, she lost the ability to sing um, from a surgery she had. And that was like, as we know, kind of her whole thing um, would be horrific if you're, entire life and career was based on it. And I, I didn't get that far, you know, so, but she had, and then still had to deal with it. So, you know, you, you make do and she continues to live her life with grace and aplomb and you figured out. You can stabilize your stitches with pins or additional needles. For example, I want this hair to start curving outward. What is happening? There we go. Do I have any knots? There we go. I made a knot inadvertently. So his hair kind of lifts up and over. What am I doing on time? 40 minutes. Great. And if you put in a pin or an additional needle to hold it in place, that can help it maintain its shape while you get your stitches set. Or, in my case, while you create some knots. Happens to the best of us, folks. Hundreds of portraits later, and I'm still getting twists and knots in my floss. It's a occupational hazard. So before I pull that tight, I can bring my needle up in the same place or more or less in the same place. Catch this stitch, lift it, and give it a little uh, give it a little shape. All it takes is tuppence from you. That'll be in my head all day. I don't mind. You.
there, the end. I won't start it again. And okay, this goes out and around the hair. So we're going to use out and around the ear. Out and around the ear is what I meant to say. I said out and around the hair. Mm -hmm. So where this dips back in, we'll stab in, pull through, secure, pull this guy out, replace, bam. We maintain the koi vichoi. And we'll there we go. Hold that guy in place. Lovely. Don't mind a little bit of lift looseness. So the hair starts to come down and around. We designed some of these wispies so I can use both his face and this pattern as a reference. So I like the idea of we have this half stitch coming out from the point of the collar like this. That's a nice shape. Oopsie. And we have another half stitch just to get some motion going. Um, oh, Merope, you're nice. She says, you can hear it because you know music, but I find your voice beautiful. Thank you. I I, I do too. It like, I'm, I'm used to it. It's taken some years. It was like really hard. For a minute there. I mean, I used to just cry. Music, I have a lot of music baggage anyway. Um, just because I thought that was gonna be how I was gonna spend my life. And then for a lot of reasons I didn't, and I don't want to say it's like traumatic, but for a lot of reasons I didn't. So even like going to concerts is bittersweet. Oh, goosebumps, stop it. Pit okay, slaughterhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I reject it. That's not a thing. You would not. I know both of your voices are resonant. Um, and to sing in, in a French accent. Oof. Talk about goosebumps. He has this cute little flippy hair that comes out here. So I wonder if I could, I might just save it for when I have one thread in here. But if I put a, put a pin in it. And then we can couch it. That's what this method is called. Couch it in place. Cute. Little flipperoo. Then back to the collar area. I This is where it's getting just this is a issue with the dimensions of a Stitch People portrait. The beard is running into the hair way more than it does in the the I don't know, in real life. Um, so we'll get in there with a darker floss to differentiate things eventually. And the beard hairs I chose are a little bit darker. So there's a slight differentiation already between the beard and the hair. That's, uh, that's a good thing. I'm going to get up under the ear. Do I want this guy to? Yes, I do. Like these swir swirly little hairs. So it's like surgery. <laughs> I've got like my tiny, it's like playing. Do you ever play Operation as a kid? Where you had to get all the little pieces out of the body. Mm 
Okay, and then from the ear again, we go. Just gonna tuck in there. Nice, okay. This is coming to Geth's. Cool. Now we have some, let's see, that's ear and that's ear. Let's bring his hairline. Oh. We need some more horizontal stitches up around here. Up around here. Up around here. Then he'll have some bangs. Little wispies come out and over. And I'm making some irregular, like I'm bringing my needle into the skin tone ever so slightly just to contribute to the look of a more irregular hairline. Make it a little more na natural, a little more natural like. If in you reckon. Cute. Gail, you're looking fly, sir. You can also come up through existing stitches and down through existing stitches just for interest if you'd like. Because hair sometimes goes a little all over the place. Like this. But they put some stitches out of the way. There we are. Just give them a little brush. And, um... His hair is going a little bit higher than it appears to in the game. I don't mind that. Here's why. Because Stitch People's faces are so wide that bringing the hair up a little more adds to the look of like forehead height without adding forehead. Like it just, it helps with the wide round little faces and the issues that they present. So... I'm not too upset about it. This guy, I want this to be a pretty big curve here. So let's see what that will do. Nice. So if I take that out, bring this in, catch it, pull it tight. Let's see, do I want just uh, have to decide what direction this couching stitch needs to go? Just right along like that to the side. Not to the back, definitely needs to go. We'll just stick that in there. Yeah, it's subtle enough. I don't mind it. It gives us uh, gives us some some motion that we need. I am getting low on floss, so I'm gonna swap around those. And then I think by the time, yeah, we've still got a half hour before time is up, and we'll be be able to finish the other side. Uh, that's beard. Ah, here's hair. We'll be able to finish the other side of the hair and then go over with highlights and I think outline the beard. Because the I, I find this with more or less symmetrical hairstyles, Gail's hair clearly isn't exactly symmetrical, but it's very, very similar. It's not like an A-line cut or something. 
um, when you have that going on, it's easy, easier to do the second side of it once you've done the first side of it. That makes sense. I'm really liking our color combo. It's definitely a dark brown, but it's a it's a muted dark brown. It's grayish. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Hated the. OK. So Marope loved the operation game and Christina hated it. I. I liked it in theory. It, the, the sounds, the sounds really scared me. I, it would give me just such anxiety if, if, if I knew it wouldn't go eh, when you missed, I would have been able to ace it every time, but just the anticipation of setting off the sound. Oof. I hated that sound. All righty. So now we'll fill in this other side. What happens if I bring this needle out and kind of tuck it in to the center? Let's get our, where's our backup needle? No, oh, there it is. I put it in, put it in the pin cushion where a needle belongs. Go figure. Um, it does go up and up. Okay, I like that. So we'll bring the needle up into some place. Just want to figure out how to uh, how to secure that baby. Nice. Mm. Yeah, we need more of that irregular hairline, which we already started on the other side, so we can continue on this side. I'll get my other little scalpel here for embroidery surgery. Okay, these threads are twisting. That is causing me concern. And then I pulled too tight. There we go. So these guys, I'm just going to give a little bit of love to twist. Untwist, to twist, twist to the opposite direction. So as to untwist them. And then if I do as I did with the other, we can create some motion to the ocean. Cute. Okay, dokes. Irregular hairline. Gonna go up and into the little arches we've already made with some of that hair. Want to make sure these are gonna lay flat and not twist. Twist it a little bit. Don't love it. Lay flat, I say. As I'm pulling through from the back, I can also untwist kind of in the opposite direction. We're gonna do some soigery. Twisted floss can help sometimes and, and hinder sometimes. So it's just depending on what you're trying to achieve. Okay. So over here, we're starting to go horizontal.
great. Cute. Okay. Looking good, looking natch. Natural like. Just gonna supplement with a few horizontals. Wanted to be a doctor. Oh, love that. Okay, so then you start to get longer again. So coming down around the ear. Get out our second. Let's see. I'm looking at this hair. It kind of starts up here and comes down. So, hmm. It needs to end like here. I don't really go out farther. That's the, f okay. this where it needs to be anchored? We're just going to play with that. No, that is incorrect. We need to come inward. There we go. And then anchor it. Now yeah, that's cute. Okay. Okay, we'll come around and in. Okay. Cute, Gail. Looking like a cutie patootie. So now I'm going to reference my pattern. We have some diagonals happening here. One true diagonal goes up to the collar. Another one gets up in there. And then I do have some half stitchers like this, like this, and like this. Great. That's cute. And if we wanted to, we could do a full stitch like up and into this milieu that gets anchored here and then gets anchored here and goes around thusly. Yeah. You see? So now what we can do is get to where that was anchored. And I need to pull that in somehow. Let's go up to the ear. It's just solving puzzles. It's just making your own puzzles in real time and then solving them in real time. <laughs> just like, oh, cool. Well, this is the thing that I'm going to figure out now. Awesome. And then you figure it out. And then you make another stitch that you have to figure something else out. Cool.
And let's bring this guy in a little bit. Great. And we'll twist up into the beard. Nice. Looking good, looking good. Okay, Gail, you're getting there, buckaroo. We just need a couple more stitches down at the bottom. Come up against the beard. Come out from under the ear. Oh, he's got an earring. I forgot about his cool wizard earring. He would. I'm Gail of Waterdeep. I live in a tower and I've got an earring. That's right. I read books and I have an earring because I'm Gail and I'm cool. Great. Awesome. So now what we can do is get just a little more detail. I want to fix this. There was a gap and I didn't like it. All right, what am I doing on time? Great. Fantastic, Gail. You're looking fly. So let's tie that off. Now what we're going to do, we're going to quick re-pin cushion all of these that I have taken out I'm using. Cool. Now is this our highlight color? Why, yes, it was. I'm going to quick thread up one strand of 3862. And that'll be for highlights in the hair. I'm gonna use my thinnest needle because I can be the most precise with it. Whoop. <laughs> Crochet Phil wanted to do a beanie for my cat, but his head is too big. Oh no, do you have to start over? That stinks. Okay, we'll just secure this guy first. I'm glad we did his eyes and his smiling little lips because otherwise um, he might have looked strange. So, highlights, let's see. We've got some great gray streaks happening. To make this more natural, we're just gonna use, we're just gonna make wispies with this single thread. So just gonna lace them into the hair as if they were coming out naturally. Just a couple single threads. This one will go down to the hairline, why not? And we'll do a nice big curve along with that big curve in the hair arch, whatever you want to call it. Single threads couch into place a little more subtly, which is nice. Just, there we go. And there's some more, okay. For example, this placeholder on the left side, don't love him, so I can cover that up with a highlight.
easier if I had caught it in real time. Not let it look so unsightly. It's not so bad. It's a little bad. It's fine. But we can cover it up. A little sleight of hand, a little trickery. I want one little hair to go up and over. We'll do his bangs, we'll do eyebrows, all with one single thread. I keep calling them bangs. It's like those little wisps, you know what I mean? Little, little wispies. These guys, they come from about this position on his forehead. On his forehead. And they fall, well, actually, lies. They come from up here, actually, and they come out and over. So, you need to start them a little farther to the right. And they go up and over the end near his eye, beautifully enough. But we're going to need to have a little bit of length here to catch these into place. So first, it comes up and over like this. So I'll hold that into place there. And then it swoops down and then we'll do the ones that come over into the face pulled a little too tight on that security stitch don't want to lose the impact there All oh, very gentle. Nice. So from a similar place, this will go up and over. And we'll end it, oh, maybe by his ear. Doesn't come super onto his forehead, but I think if we take a little bit of a creative liberty to make it so, it will look a little more natural. Yep. Pull him over into class. Nice. Unfortunately, my brain is like, yeah, no, he needs a third one. So. We will do that. I think I'll go a little bit over if people need to like hop off. That's totally fine, as always, at any point. But I do, I'll just stay in the zone and try and finish. Whoops. Try and finish at least the hair. Highlights look nice, though. It's adding a little bit of warmth, which we needed. He also needs just a little bit of scruffy fluff around. I don't know what to call that. Frizz, frizzies? He just needs a little frizzies. Like real real hair situation. It's 
like if you're going to make it look like real hair, you should just make it look like real hair. You know what I mean? So there's going to be little flyaways and stuff. I'm just using the picture as the guide. Great. And is there anything else that needs smoothing here? This little curl could use just a little bit of love. Make it a little more consistent. Like you can go through with this, the single thread becomes your fine tooth comb or your fine tip pencil or pen or what have you, you know, for your detailing and making things look just right. Because in this context, the single threads are a little more forgiving. Hello, Luna. Welcome back. I'm going to be going a little bit past two. I don't know if you heard that announcement or not, but um, because now I'm, I'm like on a roll with finishing his hair. <laughs> so it's like, I'm just going to see, I'm going to see it through because we're pretty darn close. Maybe another 20 minutes, but feel free to like hop on, hop off, whatever you need to do. No biggie. Alrighty. I do like, I mean, he's got some wispies that I designed in and we do have um, I'm going to steal from his beard, one of the dark, darker of the two colors. I'm going to quick lace up. <laughs> I don't know why I want to say lace. I'm going to thread up my crooked detail needle. I'm going to give him eyebrows because the hair, if there's any bangs falling over his forehead, they're going to cover the eyebrows, right? So... I've got that thread still threaded, his highlight color. I'm just gonna quick secure my one thread of dark flash. We'll flip a Rooney. Okay. Now I'm going to, it's, it's a flat stitch across the brow about about halfway between the holes of the Ada fabric. So that's all good. And if anything, we want a sympathetic slant, not an angry slant. So we'll see if we, yep, see, we've got a little bit of an angry slant there. I don't like that or want that. You see, all of a sudden he's like, hmm, skeptical Gail is skeptical. Gail disapproves of whatever you just did. So eyebrows really will quickly make or break a character. We don't need skeptical Gail. Gail approves of literally almost everything. Literally almost. I, I know what I said and I mean what I say. Okay, in this case, now I'm going to move my needle up literally a thread. A thread can make all the difference. And then I'll do a little quarter stitch. And I can pull this guy down a little. to secure an eyebrow into place. I don't usually do eyebrows on Stitch People portraits, but uh, felt right. Felt right. So same thing on the other side. We'll give them some eyebrows. Um, That's too much. That's too big. I hate it. I hate it. Undo, undo. Again, it's the difference of like a thread's width. I know. 
this is why I have this itty bitty teeny tiny little bit of crochet hook. It's for this purpose. So I can snag what I need to snag. Snag what you need to snag. Snag what you need to snag. I might just have to flip over. Snag what you need to. Okay. I went too far down. Uh, too low. I started too low. Okay, eyebrows, one more time. These details, man. It'll kill you. Oh, he's baldy again. Baldy brows. We'll just start from scridgity scrizzage. We're watching 30 Rock. That's a Tracy Jordan reference. Okay. So, listen, let's get our threads. They've gotten all ski wampus now. We brush them into place. as they are meant to be. Aw, okay. One more time, one more time. We don't want angry brows, so we're gonna take the far right side a little on the low end. We want sympathetic gale brows, but not like sucker brows. Like, he's like, ah, we don't want that. It's just, he has a very straight brow situation. Cute. Okay, now we need the tiniest, tiny little quarter stitch to elongate the brow to the right. And I did like a full half stitch. Like, what was I thinking? <laughs> oh, boy. There we go. Much better and worth redoing. So once again, now the other side, I need to get them stitches in place because having stitched and unstitched and restitched has caused some trouble. Noise, bam, okay. There we go, Gail. Well done, buddy. Then a tiny little quarter stitch. All of a sudden he comes even more to life with a brow. We love to see it. Ta-da, ta-da, Gale of Waterdeep. How cute are you? Okay, so now, we go back to the highlighting, which was going to involve some bangs. Oh, look, I got a knot that I didn't catch in time. 
So as I tie this off, what I'm going to do is make a little knot bouquet so that I can cut all of that back. So I hold the knotted threads out to the side and I run my needle under and around a couple of times because we don't know what's secured by what or controlled by who or how or why or when or where. All right, now I can clip the whole knot. Oh, look, wait, we need one more. One more secure security stitch. Because sometimes this happens and you just want to make sure that when you clip off stuff from the back, you want to make sure that what you're taking out is actually excess and not important to something else. Other stitches, things you're not thinking about. I don't like having big floppy stuff hanging off the back of my portrait, but I also don't want to risk messing something up. So we're just, oopsie, I knocked my camera. Just going to make sure this is uh, secure. Nice. Okay. Good boy. Good boy. Blammo. Now we'll lace up the highlight again. We'll add a couple forehead wispies. We'll flesh out the highlights on the other side of our boy. We'll call it a day. So this needs a forehead wispy. Should we just go straight across? Is that cute? Yeah, that's cute. If we just do a little out and across. Do we even need to secure that? Yeah, because we don't want it to be flat across. We do need some Yeah, I like it just dipping over the forehead, but we just need one tiny, teeny little tack stitch to tack it into place. Right down here, we'll blend it in. It'll be so sneaky. Sneaky sneak. There, lovely, cute, adorable. And then he has a forehead wisp. Comes out and around pretty much from the center towards the brow like this. cute. Might even get away with, uh, hmm, I could probably use darker floss for those. Not too worried about it though, because we're already going all out for this and that's pretty all out already. Almost done with the wispies on the right. Uh, 
what's his wispy? He's not as wispy on the on the other side. So let's just get one low. Let's see what would help this. Do I need to split that up? Yeah. Great. We'll give him a little. I keep, I don't know. I don't have any other word other than wispy. Just flyaways, frizzies. There we go. Couple other options. We like words. We like options. Options for words. Great. The tighter you pull these additional threads, the more they will lay inside what you've already done and next to what you've already done. And it will flesh out what you've already done a bit. So that's just something to consider. And it doesn't have to all lay on top of. You can go in there. So at this point, we're kind of just coloring with floss. I'm going to add, oops, I keep bouncing. Add one wispy kind of uh, hair in front of the ear kind of a, an effect. Nice. Okay. I'm feeling good. Think. If I do one more. These, yeah, these hairs are getting really, really specific, almost needlessly so. And I feel like, I mean, I feel like that's Gail, right? That's his cute little face. So if we tie this off, I can quickly get a very subtly darker brown to outline the beard and differentiate it just a little bit more from the... Then we'll call it a day and I will watch TV while I finish this. I mean, I guess I could keep streaming. I but I don't I don't think so. People got lives to live. It's not like I expect everybody to stay on the stream the whole time. That's the thing. Is that too dark? If we did whoops, one of these. This is one of the richest browns, 938. Yeah, I mean, that might be a little too rich, but it's a, it's the right shade if we're being technical. This one isn't quite as red. Is that going to be a good one? It's dark. So if we're differentiating between the beard. Uh, I like this one. Great. Let's do that. It's uh, sometimes I accidentally hit my space bar and sometimes my space bar mutes my microphone. <laughs> anyway, this is my almost black dark brown and I really like it because in smaller amounts. Yeah, see, I like that. I like that. It's just a little bit darker, you know. 
It is rich though. So maybe I use the grayer version, 3021. See how they're both really dark, but this one is a little bit more black and this one's a little bit more red. I don't know if that's easy to see or not. I think I will because he is. Sorry, Gale of Water Deep. Sucks to be like 400 years old or whatever you are. I don't know. Everybody in this game is like very old. Asterion's at least 200. How do you think he was when he got froze? When he when he was turned to a vampire and like it immortalized. At what age, I wonder? What is he like? 40? 30? 7? I don't know. He's definitely not young, young. He's out of his 20s, I would say, physically. He's got some some lovely wrinkles on his face. Gale, I don't know, it's tough to say, because Gale is just, like, he's graying a little bit, but he's centuries old. Oh, hey, Valentina. Yeah, J J Jahira and Halson. Yeah, Halson's like at least 300, I think. And Jahira, they've known each other for a while. So yeah, that I have to admit, because you find that scroll that Jahira's messing around with, like the scroll of eternal life or whatever, and you and you get to ask her about it. And it's like, hey, did you hear what you're doing with that scroll, boo-boo? And she's like, don't even worry about it. And I'm just like, listen, I'm worried about it, though. Not worried. I want to use it. Can I use it? That's what I'm getting at. And I wish you could use it. At least, with my, maybe there's a way. But with my playthrough, it's just like a thing that you find, and it's interesting, I guess. I want Gail's beard to be a little better, I'll be honest. It's not so bad. So I'm going to add a few more straight stitches. Just want it to be a little more consistent looking. Now that his hair is in, and I use so many colors in his hair, his beard is looking a little cuckoo pants to me. Oh, yeah, 40 something for Starian. That's what I think too. Like, obviously, he's like an attractive fit 40 something, but I do think I, I get slightly older vibes for him. It's just like he, he lived some life for a second and then got vampired. Baldur's Gate 2 might have Jahira. I know, um, what's his face with the hamster is like a fan favorite too for people who know. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, I guess. Yeah, this beard needed just a little more. And if I'm being completely candid, I'll probably, because this is a bit of a darker color, I think I'll probably go through and add a little bit more of it to the um, to his hair. Just the highlight lightened it up quite a bit, which is fine. That's what highlights do. But I'll go in and low light it. Okay, we're gonna outline, outline and double back to low light. What's that phrase? Be prepared to be surprised. That's what stitching is. You just do the best you can and then you make, I don't wanna say problems for yourself, but you, you come up with puzzles to solve as you go.
And here we've been going, you know, for over three hours and we don't even have his robe, right? Once again, just be, be prepared if you jump in that it's going to take a good long while. But it's worth it. Oh, it's worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're just going to low light it now. And I know the whole point was to differentiate the beard from the hair. I'm not, not forgetting this. I just don't want them to be like drastically different. And they've become a bit drastic for my taste. So we'll especially do the base where the shadow, you know, his hair's getting into his neck and his collar. So it's going to be more likely to be dark as opposed to up above, shining in the light, exposed to the sun more. I want that to come up and around or tuck in is the question. I think tuck in. So we need that gray to come through. Let's not forget. I am going to go over his one little wispy bang. With the dark, I think it'll read better if it's darker. Just be like a little shading. Cute. We'll add a Add another bang. Nice. Okay. We like, we like what's going on. Very nice. Do a uh, low light here in the horizontal stitchers. Sticking the needle through at an angle. Can integrate it with stitches that already exist. If you find you need to do that. Oh, my hub says it's getting choppy. Um, and that's probably just because I've been going for a while. I'll probably go for like three more minutes and call it a day, honestly. Because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good, feeling pretty good about this. So 
Yeah, this is what we needed. We needed just a little bit of that dark gray back in here. The highlights were cute and they are cute and I'm glad I did them, but we just needed to even it out again. We t it was medium toned and we took it a little bit, a little too light and now we're evening, which I like. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. And then, um, honestly, like three more. Was um, adding this color into the beard, darkened the beard a bit, and I just wanted a little more consistency in the hair. So, feeling pretty good about it. He's looking cute. He's looking fly. And uh, and it's Gale. You know, we love him. And I'm out of floss anyway. Cute. How do we feel about it? I feel good about it. Okay. If I if I'm honest with myself, I know I'm gonna add a little bit more of this low light just down at the base of the right side. But I think for the sake of today. I really appreciate everyone who was here and hung around. I sure, I sure appreciate you. It's always more fun to do with, um, with people. I'm going to undo this. Oh, good. I am live. I was going to say, if I just hold this up, this is what we got. And it looks really cool with the glitter with this like magic background, whatever. Um, and as these things are meant to be viewed, looking at him, a little bit uh, from a distance. Really loving it. I'll post photos along the way as he gets even more done. But until then, thanks for hanging out. Check out the design stream that we did last week. That was really, really fun where we put together the pattern that I've been referencing. Um, the proportions of the Stitch People characters are a little bit different than I do um, otherwise. But then we started stitching him. He's turning out great. And I'll take some photos of him as I go. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out, everybody. It's always, always a pleasure. And if you have any questions, of course, you can DM us on Instagram or anywhere, I guess, or info at stitchpeople.com. And we'll do our best to answer all your questions. And the next character I'm doing is Carlac. She is a tiefling devil person with red skin and horns and a tail. So that's going to be really fun. Um, she's got like cool scarring and like she's from, she lives in the hells. And so she's on fire a lot. And so scars. So she's going to be fun to do. She's got makeup and this like cool tattered outfit. It's going to be hard. This is going to, be, going to be a challenge. So that'll be a fun one. Um, so join us. I think that's, I don't think it's the next week. I think one or two weeks away. I'm going to do all these Baldur's Gates on Saturdays at 11. So they're not every week, but when they are, and I'll do announcements, um, they will be on, uh, on Saturdays. So anyway, thank you so, so much. And I will see you all around the internet. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And bye for now. Ta-ta.